Hey, dude. Let's chat for a second about style. Whether you mean to or not, you're always sending a message to your audience. It's kind of like body language. You are communicating. The question is whether the message you're sending is on purpose or not, and whether it's consistent with the personality that you're trying to portray as you're performing. Now, a lot of style is pretty self-evident, right? The clothes you wear, the cards you use, the words you choose, all of those are very overt messages that you send to your audience about who they're dealing with, and you hope that those messages are consistent. But there's a quieter, more subdued, more subliminal message that you're always sending the entire time you're performing, and it can either reinforce the character you're trying to portray, or it can throw a monkey wrench in the whole deal. And that message comes from your handling. You see, how you handle your props, especially in a close-up situation with things like cards and coins, communicates to your audience a lot about you and your capabilities as a performer. Say you were to take out a deck of cards and just start shuffling them. By how you shuffle, you might be communicating how often you handle a deck of cards, or maybe how long. You might be telling them the difficulty that you can maintain while handling the cards. You might even be communicating whether what you're doing is second nature to you or not by virtue of whether you look up and engage with them or you have to stare down at your hands. Now, a lot of those messages are going through unconsciously. We don't know that we're sending those messages. And even if we do, it might feel like it's too late to change. But there is one aspect that we are always in control of, and that's the display of ability, which is where this comes in. Expert at the Card Table by S.W. Erdnays. This is a special edition signed by Chris Dixon and Di Vernon. If you get it, you get it. I have a love-hate relationship with this book. I love it because I think it's brilliant. I think there's a bunch of really, really cool ideas in it. I hate it because sometimes people take it as a religion. They take it as gospel, and it isn't. It's not the final word on card magic. That being said, there is a part right in the beginning that you should know. The display of ability. Excessive vanity proves the undoing of many experts. The temptation to show off is great. He has become a past master in his profession. He can laugh at luck and defy the laws of chance. His fortune is literally at his finger ends, yet he must never admit the skill or grow chesty over his ability. It requires the philosophy of a Stoic to possess superiority and refrain from boasting to friend or foe. Oof. You see, that's the horrible part about magic, is that if you try to take credit for all of it, you actually downplay the magical aspect of anything that you're doing. The second you display a massive amount of prowess, say with a deck of cards, then it doesn't matter how miraculous the thing is that you're doing with that deck, your skill becomes the default explanation for all of it, whether it has anything to do with your skill or not. So just to prove a point, I'm going to do the same thing three different ways. And you'll see the different message that each different style is sending to the audience. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the queen and I'm going to put it in the middle of the deck and then I'm going to snap. And now that card is back on top. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that card we're gonna put it in the middle of one pack. We're gonna take that and then I'm just gonna push it forward and it's going to appear back on top. Okay, for this last one, I'm gonna need your help. We are gonna take your card. We're going to put it into the middle. There we go. No funny business, it's not on top or on bottom. But if you would, just do me a favor and hold your hand directly over the deck. Because like we said before, you chose this card. This card is now drawn to you more than any other card in the deck. So just hold your hand over the deck. And then when you're ready, look at the top card. Well done. You see what I mean? It's one effect, but three completely different ways of doing it. Now, yes, presentation style had a lot to do with that, but let's just evaluate from a handling standpoint. The first one was tense. Right? I had to really hold on to the cards. I had, I looked like I was really trying. And that can be to your advantage if you actually know what you're doing. But if you don't, then that's something that you have to learn to kill because that tension always gets communicated to your audience and it makes them look harder at whatever is tense in front of them. The second one was pure ego. That was me just showing off, right? It's me showing how cool I can be with things at my fingertips. But again, this can also be a tool. Sometimes that is actually part of the narrative, but you gotta understand, the second that you show off that level of prowess, that becomes a potential explanation for anything that happens after that fact. Even if it's something incredible, it can now be traced back to your skill because your skill might be just as impressive. That final one, technically speaking, is the most difficult for me to do. Those moves are very, very difficult to execute and they don't give you much credit visually, but, I also did something very important. I took the credit off myself. 
I made the spectator the magician, which is a tool that you can also use, but the message has to be consistent. If I had done the second routine, but then tried to make it look like it was the spectator's fault, it becomes disingenuous. But if I do the third one, I make it all about them, then that also takes a lot of the heat off of my ability and makes it all about that magical experience. Now, I'm not going to tell you what way is best to perform because every character and every magician is different. But what I can tell you is that you should be evaluating what message you're sending with your style of handling and make sure that it's consistent with the character that you're trying to portray. As for this bad boy, expert the card table, Get it, find it, start reading it, especially that first section, just get started. There are plenty of really good editions out there. A lot of them are free, but the one I recommend the most is this one. It's called the Charles and Wonder Edition, and it has two features that most editions do not. The first is called an errata. It's a section in the back of the book that goes over where the original author messed up when they were describing slights, and that can be really helpful if you're deep diving into this book and you can't figure out why something isn't working. The second thing though, is that this one has an index and it goes for a good long while. So if you were looking for something specific, you don't have to go hunting all the way through the book and you don't have to remember the contents of all of the chapters. You can just go to the specific page. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description below so you can easily find a copy of this one. I know I say this next part a lot, but I really do mean it. Thank you to everyone who has been leaving all of the amazing comments and ideas and likes and subscriptions. I appreciate the encouragement. It really does feed my soul. To anyone new here, welcome to the channel. I hope you find something useful. I try to upload videos like this at least once a week, so I hope you come back for more. If you do have ideas about what you want to see in the future on this channel, please leave that in the comments below. I do read all of them and it's really inspiring to see what all of you want to learn and I hope I can meet at least part of that need. In the meantime, I'll see you guys soon.